Hey guys, Matt here. This is my review of The Avengers. Movies directed by Joss Whedon and movie stars Robert Downey Jr., Chris Evans, Chris Hemsworth, Jeremy Renner, Samuel L. Jackson, Scarlett Johansson, Mark Ruffalo, with Clark Gregg, Stellan Skarsgård, and Tom Hiddleston. Very rarely do I walk out of a movie speechless. Not in a negative way. If the movie's bad, I have words for that. I'll let you know how I feel about that. But when a movie like The Avengers is so good, all I can do is just take a deep breath and just say, wow, that's how good this movie was. Now, it's not going to be the next Citizen Kane, but all my worries and all my predictions and all my thoughts going into this movie were answered. Not only were they answered, but they were exceeded. This movie was unexpectedly good. My only concern was that this movie bring together all of the characters from their respective Marvel movies. Did this movie do everything that it set out to do, starting from the beginning of Iron Man to the end of Captain America? And I can proudly say, yes. Yes, it did. And in a big way. Now, this I have so much to say about this movie, so I don't know where to start. So let's start with the acting, first and foremost. Robert Downey Jr., <laughs> just like he came right out of his movie Iron Man, right into the Avengers, just like all the other Avengers characters, Robert Downey Jr., you know, was the, the quick-witted, you know, <laughs> the smart-ass, stealing every scene he's in character. Uh, Chris Hemsworth is Thor. Um... It was like I just turned off Thor and bam, there he is in the Avengers. So he was so good in that movie. But to me, the spotlight was really on Chris Evans because he portrayed Steve Rogers so well in this movie. Not only as a leader of the Avengers, as the, the soldier telling his men what to do and where to go, but he was also trying to keep their respect and trying to be the respectable leader and not lose focus and I even loved this is where the comedy was just great in this movie Chris Evans again proved that he's to me such a better actor than Ryan Reynolds Chris Evans portrayed Steve Rogers so well that every time there was a reference or every time something modern or something technological came about Steve Rogers being from the 40s didn't know what anything was, and I really loved how they did that, because he didn't catch any of the references that any of these modern guys were talking about, and to me, that was where some of the funny scenes came from. Um, Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. I didn't like how his character was used at first in the movie, but I like his character as, as Hawkeye. It's funny because, again, with the comedy, Rob Downey Jr., he calls Hawkeye Legolas in the movie. That's how, that's how quick Rob Downey Jr. is in this movie. Mark Ruffalo, another spotlight in this movie, portrayed Bruce Banner, to me, the best way. Better than Edward Norton, better than Eric Bana, because he didn't come off as this, you know, slightly jacked guy that was also a scientist. He looked like a scientist. He looked like he did in um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Mark Ruffalo, where he had his glasses, so he looked like a scientist. He was all giddy, and he spoke science talk with Tony Stark. It was really, really nice. Scarlett Johansson, she played, you know, Black Widow well, just like she did in Iron Man 2, but to me better because she had a lot more to work with, and she had a lot more emotions to display in this movie. Samuel L. Jackson is Nick Fury. I'm glad he wasn't put out in a movie like he's, you know, hey, this is Samuel L. Jackson. He's going to do a lot of screen time. No. He was director Nick Fury. He basically told the guys, look, this is your job. And when they kind of lost focus and kind of straight off point, he would, you know, gear them back. He was like General Hawk in the first G.I. Joe, Dennis Quaid's character, where he was their boss, but he didn't, you know, wasn't controlling. He let them do their own thing. He let them work out their own issues. And I like that. Um, Loki. Tom Hiddleston as Loki. Great job. I really liked him in Thor. He was probably my favorite actor in that movie because he did such a good job as the, you know, the, the jealous younger brother. 
uh, Stellan Skarsgård, also in the movie, um, as Professor Dr. Dr. Selbeck. Um, small role, but I'm glad to see him back in this movie. Uh, Clark Gregg as Agent Phil Coulson. Great, great in his role. He had, uh, he had more to do in this movie, and just him, his uh, exchanges with Captain America were just, oh, so, so funny. The comedy in this movie, the unexpected comedy, was just great. The three funniest scenes in this movie. Two of them involve the Hulk, and the third one is during the credits. I'll get to that more in a little bit. But the action, the comedy, the acting, everything that I wanted this movie to be was three best scenes in the movie. One involving the Hulk and Thor, one involving the Hulk and Loki, and the third scene is actually after the credits. There are two after the credits scenes, as I'm glad that they were, because they should have been. The first scene is like the <coughs> credit scene in Green Lantern, where it's before the scrolling credits, but it's after the actual movie. The next scene is after the scrolling credits, which was great. To me, that was one of the best scenes next to Wolverine's cameo in X-Men First Class. That scene was just so good, and it was so well-placed. Um, I forgot to mention, Gwen Paltrow was also back in this as Pepper Potts. Small scene, but it was nice. It was pretty much introducing Tony Stark into the mix of the Avengers movie. And just... Everything about this movie was good. I really couldn't ask for anything more. Uh, like I said, it was a little long, but really I can't think of any scene or moment or event in the movie that could have been trimmed down and it would have fit. Because, I mean, to me, had you told me that movie was two and a half hours long, I would have been like, really? It felt a little long, but two and a half hours? It's not bad. So, The Avengers, it's here. And it's such a good movie. Um... Next we have, what, Iron Man 3, and then we have a sequel to Thor, I think, and then maybe a sequel to Captain America, and yeah, Avengers is probably definitely going to have a sequel, but really, at this point, I don't think they should. That movie was just so good, they should just leave it alone. So, because this movie was just great fun, it was hilarious, it was action-packed, amazing action, amazing scenes, amazing fights, amazing chemistry between all of the characters from a rating of 1 to a 5. I'm going to give this movie a 5, hands down. And as of right now, the best movie of 2012. So, watch out, Dark Knight Rises. You've got some steep competition headed your way. So, until next time, guys, see ya. By the way, if you guys haven't checked this out, it's the Avengers issue of Entertainment Weekly. Check it out. There's a pretty funny and interesting roundtable interview with all the Avengers as well as Joss Whedon about their characters and going into their roles and how they work together on set. This interview is great. They have, <laughs> they have the actors playing with little Lego versions of themselves and they're one-upping each other and there's a question where one of them asks, so, Sam Jackson, how did you prepare for your role as Nick Fury in this movie? He goes, well, I just watched David Hasselhoff, and I decided to do none of that. <laughs> so the interview's great, and uh, I really, really hope that there's a gag reel on the DVD version of The Avengers, because when that comes out, not only am I going to buy it on Blu-ray, but I'm also going to proudly display it next to my other Marvel movies as well. So, uh, The Avengers, it's here, guys. Why are you still watching this review? Go see it.